Limited Q4 FY23 Earnings Conference Call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchdown phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Krishna Patel from EY Investor Relations. Thank you, and over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Sandhvi. I am pleased to welcome you all to Anupam Rasayan's earnings call to discuss Q4 FY23 results. Please note a copy of all our disclosures are available on the investor section of our website as well as on the stock exchanges. Anything said on this call which reflects our outlook for the future or which could be construed as a forward-looking statement must be reviewed in conjunction with the risk that our company faces. Today, from the management side, we have with us uh, Dr. Kiran Patel, the chairman, Mr. Anand Dekai, the managing director, Mr. Amit Khurana, the CFO, uh, Mr. Vishal Thakkar, the deputy CFO. Now, I shall hand over the call to Dr. Kiran Patel for his opening remarks. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Good evening and a warm welcome to our Q4 FY23 earnings call. I hope you all are doing well. The year 2023 continues to unfold additional challenges for the world, starting with the banking crisis unraveling in the United States, also having some impact in Europe and the rest of the world. Continued inflation and higher interest rates, along with the ongoing Ukrainian conflict, all contributing to the uncertainty on the economic front. The true test of leadership is measured by the ability to navigate through these turbulent times safely. Anupam is fortunate to have a great team under the able leadership of Anand Desai, who is driving our long-term goals of becoming one of India's largest players in the specialty chemical space. Anupam has been strategically investing in technology and infrastructure, human capital, research and development to achieve this goal. To elaborate further on the technology front, our manufacturing infrastructure is a class apart. We were probably one of the first few companies to have started using the continuous flow processes in early part of 2013, helping us win and sustain the confidence of global clients and which aids in further new client acquisitions. Moving on to our investment in human capital, we have expanded our business development team. The testament of this expansion is our recent wins in Japan and United States to this new development. On the green initiative side, we have installed 17.9 megawatt solar power plant, which will provide us with savings of 14 crores per annum. On the strategic front, the recent acquisition of Tampax has allowed us to further build upon the existing fluorination portfolio. On the R&D team, this robust team has allowed us to build complex chemistries at competitive cost, which allowed to demonstrate our capability to the customer. The recent LOIs signed are a result of this strategy. And I will let Anand discuss this in greater detail later. As part of our long-term growth strategy, we also continue to evaluate multiple strategic inorganic growth opportunities across geographies to further consolidate and accelerate our growth trajectory and offer our customers a complete solution for their requirements. 
I can assure all of our all of our shareholders that we will continue to be cautious and selective in evaluation of these opportunities. And like the acquisition of Tantac, we will acquire companies only if they are strategic and value accredited to Anupam. Before I conclude, let me congratulate our Anupam team on our FY2023 performance. We have delivered a robust revenue growth of 20% plus in FY23, driven by various contracts which we signed during FY22 and 23. Surfing back to what I had alluded earlier, all the levers which we have been working on for years are now converging and the results are a byproduct of the same. I will let our CFO Amit and Vishal discuss financial numbers in detail later. On a closing note, amidst the weak global economic backdrop and headwinds, Anupam is shining well due to our planned long-term strategy. With this, I hand over the call to Anand for his opening remarks. And I would like to thank you all once again for joining us here tonight. Over to you, Anand. Thank you, Dr. Patel. Hello and good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Q4 FY23 opening call. It gives me great pleasure in sharing that we have continued our robust growth momentum with a consolidated top line growth of 49% on a YY basis to be 1601 crore rupees. And stepping along top line growth of 20% on a YY basis to be 1284 crore rupees. This growth was driven by three important factors. The first factor was commercialization of five new products during the year. Second being steady growth of our organic product portfolio. And third was strong performance by Tenfa. This growth augurs well in the backdrop of a trending year in terms of supply chain issues, raw material pricing volatility, sticky inflation, and other major economic events that have impacted the world at large. Despite these challenges, not only have we been able to deliver a strong growth, but also have we been able to maintain our margins. This ranges to our business model and long-term strategy. On the operations part, we continue to focus on adding more value-added products in our market, as well as bringing financial efficiencies. We have already started witnessing the results of the same, which is visible in stable margins and improved working capital resulting in a strong cash generation of rupees 244 crores from operations. Dr. Patel mentioned about our investments in infrastructure, talent and technology, and how this has helped Anubhav in achieving this robust growth skill rate. We shall continue to capitalize on these platforms for creative and further invest in strengthening and expanding this period of growth. Let me expand on some of this. On infrastructure, during the last five years, we have incurred almost 1,000 crore of capex which has created manufacturing capacity in, and which has resulted in growth of over 26% CAGR over the last five years. Further, this capex would also support similar growth for the next couple of years. Further on, the alloy contract signed and the strong demand along with the inquiry from global customers for fluorination based molecules, and due to which we have announced capex of rupees 670 crores for the three new brownfield projects to service the requirement. And this new capacity will ensure growth for the next three to five years. Coming to the point of talent, we remain focused on investing in talent acquisition across functional areas, specifically in R&D. Our team grew by 11 scientists 
into Route 18 professional as of end of FY23. Looking at the project in pipeline, we have planned to double our R&D team in FY24 to 175 scientists. Further, we have added 12 experts in business development team across US, Japan, Europe, and India. All these existing and new talent pool will help us strengthen our product development and customer relationships. On technology, we have launched five products during FY23, most of which are manufactured in India for the first time. I wish to applaud our R&D and business development team for their exceptional work in synthesizing these policies in a record short time with our distinctive processes as well as scaling them up to a commercial level. We shall continue with momentum and we target to launch our 10 products in FR24 in various segments including niche, pharma and electronic evidence and again we are for the first time in India. With the backdrop of recent geopolitical events, the world is changing significantly in terms of supply chain management and vendor consolidation in favor of reliable long-term supply chain partners, especially from India. They are presenting us with many opportunities that are very really accredited and sustainable. I am happy to share that with the recent LOIs and contracts signed, our community value of LOIs and contracts has reached a total of 5,500 crores, which are to be supplied over a period of 5 to 7 years, and which significantly improves our growth and revenue visibility. At the same time, we further remain in advanced stage of discussions with customers across geographies for many niche and high value molecules. I am more confident than ever of also delivering robust growth in FY24. With that, I would like to hand over the floor to our CFO, Amit Bhai. Amit Bhai, please. Oh, thank you, Anand sir. Good evening, everyone. I will discuss some important financial updates before handing over to Vishal Bhai for his remarks. Let me begin with an update on the CAPEX. Throughout the year, CAPEX was around 177 crores, which was large, uh, largely spent on building new uh, capacities, solar project, R&D, and general CAPEX. In FY24, we expect CAPEX to be around 350 to 400 crores. Our asset turn for FY23 crossed 1x, and further, we expect it to grow significantly in FY24. I would like to reiterate that new CAPEX will have an asset turnover of over 1.5. 75x. In total, we have budgeted to do capex of 670 crores for three brownfield projects, which will support the signed LOI contracts and demand for fluorinated molecules. On the working capital side, we have been able to bring down our inventory days from 291 in FY22 to 250 days in FY23. We have been able to achieve this improvement on account of high focus on working capital intensity as promised last year. We continue to focus on working capital intensity and expect it to reduce further to a more comfortable number by next year. -end. Strong revenue growth, stable margins, and better working capital cycle has helped us deliver strong cash flow from operations of around 244 crores. I am confident that we will continue to generate robust cash flow in coming years, which will make us self-sufficient in the future. Cash on the books as of 31st March 2023 was 551 crores. This coupled with expected cash flow from operations in the coming quarters will be sufficient for the plan capex. With this, I hand over the floor to our deputy CFO, Vishal Bhai, who will take you through the financials in detail. Thank you, Amit Bhai. Uh, hello and good evening everyone. Thank you for joining us here today. I would like to briefly touch upon uh, key, key performance highlights for the quarter and the year ended 31st March 2023. And then we will open the floor for questions and answers. Before I proceed, I hope you all have had a chance to go through the detailed presentation submitted to the exchange and at our website. Kindly note our numbers for the quarter, uh, quarter and year on a consolidated basis include 10 track numbers. Uh, I will first discuss the consolidated highlights uh, uh, for the quarter, quarter ended March 31st, 2023. Operating revenue for Q4 FY23 
was at 4800 million rupees as compared to 3249 million in q4 fy22 up 48% yoy ebitda was at uh, 1416 million in q4 fy23 as compared to 969 million in q4 fy22 growth of 46% yoy which uh, this would translate into a 28% ebitda margin profit after tax was was at 2726 million rupees in q4 fy23 as compared to 46 461 million in q4 fy22 growth of 58% yoy on full year basis the operating revenue for fy23 was at 1000 uh, 16019 million rupees as compared to 10738 million in fy22 up 49% yoy ebitda was ebitda was at uh, including the other revenue was at 439 million rupees uh, 4399 million rupees in fy23 as compared to 3100 rupees in fy22 growth of 41% yoy this would translate to 27% ebitda margin for the years uh, profit after tax was at 2168 million rupees in fy23 as compared to 1522 million in fy22 a growth of 42% year on year please note consolidated numbers of fy22 does not include tenfac industries numbers okay as far as revenue break up is concerned for the year in terms of geographies in fy23 the contribution from europe was 30 india 36 japan 16% singapore 11% china 4% and remaining 2% was from us as for the year was around 64% and continues to be a major contributor to the revenue our top 10 customers contributed 82% of the total revenue and there is total 24 products that we provide to them as we continue to add more customers for the various value added products having better margin we will continue to see contribution from top 10 customers moderate in com- coming years with that being said we shall open the floor for q and a thank you thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking your questions. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to ask any questions, please enter star and one. Participants, if you wish to ask any questions, please enter star and one. First question is from the line of Vidit from IIFL Securities. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, good afternoon, and uh, thanks for taking my question. Um, Uh, just uh, if you could share some, uh, you know, further color on the the three new LOIs that uh, have been won uh, in the last, uh, you know, couple of months. Uh, just in terms of um, what what has what was the edge that Anupam had that the customer selected Anupam as a first time manufacturer in India, um, and also in terms of when revenue from these LOIs is likely to kick in. Okay. uh let me let me this is vishal let me try and uh, address it uh, and anubhav please add if i if 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 i have missed on to something uh first if i were to add uh, and say where we are coming from here uh if you see these are all the molecules that we have been working for a long time and these customers uh are the customers where where they have seen our relation with our other customers uh, and uh, the kind of quality of services and most importantly the technical capabilities that we have demonstrated for them in terms of uh, synthesis in terms of uh, uh, speed at which we have been able to deliver the quality that we we create, we, we developed for them and most importantly the supply chain solutions that we can provide 
because as you can appreciate in custom synthesis manufacturing business the key thing is can be as we are part of their supply chain can we also demonstrate to them that our supply chain is is robust enough to 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 provide them a consistent supply uh, over a period of time because this are all contract with them ranging from 5 to 7 years in terms of the 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 the, the initial relationship that they start with so that's one part of it and as we talked about chlorination basically if you see this was this was the work which we had started 6 years back or more and that now is coming to fructification because of the supply chain that that we have created here right and that's what is coming into play of the lois that we have signed uh, this year uh, we will be able to to commercialize at least couple of uh, products uh, in this year and and balance others should be in the in the next calendar next financial year Okay, so uh, anything at the beginning of the year, all of this would probably bring in revenue on a full scale only in FY twenty five. Is is that right, or is that a correct way to understand it? Yeah, you can you can you can see that way because the last part of the volume will come in the next year, and uh, okay. and the year after. So so it so if you look at typically there is, there is always a ramp up, right? And that ramp up will take a couple of years. So that's what we are saying. <laughs> understood and uh, see, uh, these customers are they existing customers or are all three of them new customers that we've uh, we've won because i think the presentation says we won one new mnc so uh, is it is it fair to assume that the other two are um you know existing customers giving us new molecules no so so and this a customer is when we sell will be will be when we initiate a sales with them in this case this is only an loi which where we the sales are not right. initiated so all these okay. three all these three lois are are with the new new customers actually so probably okay. next year you will see few more addition to our uh, customers we got it and uh, this uh, capex guidance of 350 400 crores that you've given uh, when do we see it start commercializing probably at the end of the year or a quarter after So let's say end of this uh, financial year, year stroke uh, first first quarter next year, next financial year. Okay. And all of this is uh, largely the fluorination capex. Right? Both, as we had said that there is a one capex which will go for the the alloys and contracts that we had signed, and uh, earlier alloys alloys and contracts that we signed, and two for the fluorination block. Oh, so roughly around two fifty crores for alloys and the rest for fluorine. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Okay, just one last question, if I may squeeze in um, on the on the margins for the fourth quarter, particularly. Uh, you know, the standalone business has seen a little bit of a dip. Uh, if you could just explain what has gone into that and why why margins have uh, taken a bit of a hit in fourth quarter. Okay, so if you look at it uh, largely we should you should look at us more from an ebitda perspective rather than a the only gross margin perspective because typically we will we will be looking at uh, negotiating with our customers mainly on the pbt ebitda levels of uh, uh, margins and uh, based on and this aberration that you saw in terms of this quarter uh, is largely coming from uh, the product uh, mix changing and one of couple of products which were of of where the 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 margins on um, the gross margins were were little on the on the lower side but at the ebitda level they were at the at the same levels because typically my ebitda levels are where where we where we look at the the profitability from right and if you look at for the year number that year number will look look more more reasonable where my that those those gross margins will be in the similar range at what we would have expected and uh, ebitda margins also at the same level that we let in so i would i would not read much on the quarter number and i would probably read the the annual number as a, as a representative of the business i i meant the ebitda margins excluding the other income uh, you know they have uh, sort of declined by roughly 400 basis points for the quarter <laughs> So that, that that that's 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 probably bas basically uh, a quarter quarter entering and quarter exiting uh, numbers that would have moved around, but largely it will be back to the the numbers that we are being been seeing. Okay, but the trend in uh, improving uh, you know product mix and higher margin uh, the share of higher margin products uh, remain, and we could probably see uh, these normalized in the next year. Right? absolutely absolutely it's, it's it's just it's just the shed, scheduling and the and the and the and and the, and the, uh, the product mix that you would see 
Okay, uh, thanks for these. I'll get back into it. Thank you. Sure. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that all participants are covered in the question queue, we request you to please limit your questions to three per participant. The next question is from the line of Rohan Gupta from Nuwama. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi sir. Uh, good evening and thanks for the opportunity and conversation from this set of numbers. Uh, sir, uh, the three questions from my side. Sir, first is on uh, this uh, LOI itself. If you, can, uh, you mentioned that in the last few months we have signed more LOIs for uh, 2800 crores rupees. Uh, I think if I remember that the one was announced in the uh, niche coordinated molecule recently, which you have announced is a 380 crore rupees molecule opportunity with a 76 crore rupees revenue potential. I just wanted to get more uh, on these two eight six zero crore kind of number which we're talking about. If you can some more uh, details on this, sir. Okay. Okay. Okay, so what more? So because that is limited uh, that we can we can share as of now, but as long as the confidentiality is also there. But what we are saying is yes, these are all uh, fluoridated products uh, going into API and engineering fluid applications. So this is where we are the the 380 crore number that we had say, and the other one that we are talking about is again uh, in the fluorination side, which is what we had talked about, or the 1500 crores worth of uh, uh, one which will be into fluorine, uh, fluorinated more on the polymer side of the uh, of the application and the first one that we signed uh, around uh, one crore uh, number that is a uh, one which is mainly going into a uh, fungicide it's an ai so the third one which you mentioned how much was that it's a it's a uh, seven year contract third one is a uh, around a hundred a thousand crore number over the seven years. For the seven years. And the yeah. second one we mentioned about 1500 crores. My bad, sorry, it's six years. Uh, my bad, huh? it's six years, sorry. The third one for 1000 crore is six years. Yes. The 1500 crore is for how many years? 1500 crores will be for uh, seven years. Okay. Okay. And sir, both of these uh, two molecules, 1500 both of them are in uh, fluorination, sir? 1000 uh, would into fluorination, but others are into fluorination. So all are, all are into fluorination, my bad, sorry. This is all, for, all are into fluorination. Okay, so all of them are in fluorination. And when we talk about the fluorination, so these are the further, uh, I mean, enhanced molecules in HF categories and HF based chemistry or they are in a earlier uh, chemistry which we are using clear based chemistry, uh, which, uh, which part of the chemistries are involved in these products in So, so these are the one. See, these are all the contracts which have which have been alloys that we have been signing after the acquisition contract. So you can appreciate where they are coming from and what chemistries they are in. But yeah, largely they are the chemistries which are more uh, from the HS side than the than the KS side. Okay, that's great. Uh, sir, uh, the expected timeline for these uh, molecules will be once again. I mean, we can expect uh, the commissioning of these products in next two years, or any yeah. be longer or shorter. So, uh, as I had mentioned uh, earlier, uh, these uh, LOIs, of which uh, at least two molecules we should from these mol LOIs, at least two molecules we should expect we should expect in this year, and the balance we should expect in the FI25. And the full ramp up should you should we see it in FY twenty six or two years basically from there. Okay, uh, sir. As far as the customers are concerned, that you know, one is Japanese and another is American and MP in uh, in, in finished product in these. Uh, these are the ones again uh, new customers or uh, the existing set of customers who are here to gain the car. Can uh, sorry, I couldn't hear you well. Can you just pick up a loud? Uh, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, Mohan Gupta, I would request you to please speak through the handset. No, it's okay. Yeah. Sir, I was asking that these are the existing set of customers or the new customers in the mission which we have been able to get. These are these are the new new customers that we have. 
So all the few missing customers are actually all, are all the three. So I repeat, I, I'll, I'll just clarify. All the three LOIs that we have signed are new customers that we are we are going to add. Uh, in this year's uh, presentation, if you see, we would have only added one custom, one MNC customer. That was for the sales of the product that we have done. These are the LOIs which will convert, uh, which which will translate into sales this year and next year. And so they will become my uh, revenue paying customer, like uh, FY24 and FY25. And that's the reason you would be able to see that you are just, uh, this is the question, right? So right. all three are new customers. Okay, that's great, sir. That's fantastic. Uh, so just one last and I'll come back in queue. Uh, so, sir, uh, uh, we are, these customers are looking for limited solutions. I believe that there are a couple of players who are already there in the country. So uh, I'm sure that these customers have come to us. Uh, and they, have must, they must have seen something in, uh, with, uh, in partnering with us. Uh, I'm just asking that most of these molecules will also mention that they are the new molecules as far as the India is concerned. I just want a little bit clarity. These molecules which you, are got, which you have got, they are the new features to the development or they are existing uh, I mean, they are the existing, existing players which are replacing some other country or suppliers like uh, China or Europe. So, largely, if you see, these are all the products which are typically manufactured by my customers existingly today, or maybe sourcing from from Europe or, or, or Europe and other, other other geographies, right? These are the products which are not being manufactured or sourced from in India, right? And uh, that is where the uh, what we are saying is that we would have done it in uh, first time in India. And one of them are, is a new new product, uh, or a couple of them are also new, which are launched by the, by my customer uh, also. So they are first time moving out of their, their manufacturing facility to us. Okay. Fine enough. And they are all intermediate mainly for. Uh, uh, end products. I mean, there is no none of them are AI or some products. No, there are, there is an there is an AI in it as well. No, I'm thinking that they all all these products are intermediate. There is no final technical or final ingredients, right? That's what I'm saying. Of which one of them is an AI, others okay. are uh, uh, intermediate to polymers or API, intermediate to API or engineering fluid. Sorry to interrupt. So I would request you to please come back in the queue. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. The next question is from the line of Vishal Biraya from Max Life. Please go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. Just to take forward Rohan's line of question, actually the contribution from fluorine-based uh, intermediates, fluorine-based business in uh, 24 and in 25 as these molecules fill up, Okay, so uh, I'll tell you today it is around about uh, fifteen percent in in my portfolio, and uh, we expect that contribution to expand. I am I would pref I would be preferring not to to speak a specific number in terms of it, but we should be adding. Uh, um, it should become twenty to twenty five percent of my contribution in next two to three years time. Okay. So it should be twenty percent. Okay, let me let me give twenty percent by FI twenty four and thirty percent by FI twenty seven. Thirty percent by twenty seven. Thirty percent by twenty seven. Okay. Yeah. Give me an allowance of a couple of percentage points. Ah, obviously. No, no. That is the broad direction. We need a direction. No, the numbers so will fluctuate. That is okay. Yeah, but but, but so it will also depend upon my other businesses also growing and other molecules growing. But yeah, largely you can see directionally here what we are trying to say is directionally where we will go. Fair enough. And uh, how will you be getting HF and KF to uh, Gujarat to Sachin from? First is that the uh, Tenpac is, is is my subsidiary, and uh, one and the second is also we would have an ambulance transaction with them, uh, with, with with them uh, in terms of because they are also listed and we would be also listed, so we'll do an ambulance transaction with them, and the last and the and, and one more thing is we will try and source the uh, uh, the one step forward or any uh, from HF we will we'll make it into a step which is which is more amenable. To try is what and move it to it to 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 the Anupam sites. Okay, he will do one step at Tanpak and then get the stuff. Exactly. 
and uh, and in fact we'll have his own group i would not be yeah. able to discuss now uh we can say has separately do it but yeah that will continue in that side also right right and on the slide number 23 of your presentation you have written that uh, this is anupam sir sanpar is the only manufacturer of mesh molecules and coordination so what exactly are the mesh molecules that you are referring to so there are you are the only one just just a minute let me let me read that for you uh, also along with you sir just give me a minute just to uh which uh, slide number 23 on open contact integration yeah only in the manufacturer of mesh molecules so oh what we mean here is not that we are the only manufacturers of uh, chlorinated products but the products that we will manufacture will be will be will be uh we will be will be uh, those products will be new to india we will be the only one manufacturing today or we would be the, ma- the first one to manufacture in the country so that's what you are saying there are my peers in the industry who who have been doing chlorinated products and 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 and, and for, for 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 a long time here what we mean to read is the products that we do will be the niche ones which are not produced in india and we have our own niche in which we will be operating here like what we talked about the uh, fluorinated polymers and uh, this again in polymers my peers are there who do a different polymer range and we would be doing a different polymer range uh, what will be the extent of backward integration for you for this particular polymer extent of backward integration so we'll start from hf so we'll start right from the, the starting material we will be able to 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 to, to bring it up Okay. Over the uh, video, yes, for sure, because we will have to build the whole supply chain. But yeah, that's the kind of integration. Uh, we'll start from HF. Okay. Okay. And then this is the last question. What is your HF utilization? How many tons of HF do you utilize currently, and how much would you require in twenty four, twenty five? Okay. Uh, so see, this will all depend upon my my ramp up of the business, and I would uh, rather uh, say that today my HF HF utilization will be very limited, which is more on the sample and the and the side because now we are going to commercialize the HF products, and as we as we start doing it, is that today large large portfolio of our is based on the KF uh, portfolio. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Krishan Parvani from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi sir. Uh, hi Anand Bhai and Vishal Bhai. Uh, congratulations on the order wins and good set of numbers. So four questions from my side. I'll I'll limit it to three actually. Uh, so first is, uh, what is the kind of inventory levels you are envisaging going forward? I mean, also this new order wins are priced on six months or uh, annually. So that's the first question. I'll ask okay. one by okay. one. That's okay. Okay, you'll ask one by one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, so first is the inventory. As you, as we had been 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 focusing on, we will try and bring it to to the lower numbers that we have been been indicating. Uh, we should be going back back or below what we have been what we were in FY22 uh, and FY21, my bad. So what we were in FY21 or below that. Okay. So I mean. If if I just put in the number to it, it's it's FI twenty one inventory levels were uh, at around two hundred and twenty two days. If if I'm we should, right. we should we should be doing better than that. The, our target okay. would be to do better than that. Okay, so even better than twenty FI twenty or yes. and by, by Let, give me give me give me a quarter or two to answer that. Sure. Uh, no worries, no worries, okay. no worries, no worries. Let I'll not go into yeah. Okay, so okay, so. these new order wins uh, how are the price 6 months or anyone yeah, yeah, yeah. they are they are they are a combination of annual and 6 months some uh, are few one of the customers will be more on the annual side but largely they are on the 6 month side most of them are on the 6 month and we'll, we we have an we have an option to price the price it on a 6 monthly basis understood uh, okay so my second question is on So, would our margins be initially lower than the company level EBITDA, especially in the beginning, since these are new products for us? See, typically, that's you can say, but it's not significantly really it moves up because the volumes are also pretty low at that point in time. But the moment the volumes volumes increase, we we go back to the the margin that we have been. So, I don't see any any impact of these into into my margins. 
Okay, so you expect, let's say, whatever standalone margins that you did, uh, 28 and 6% in this skull, you think these are sustainable in nature? Or you would rather guide for more like 25, 26%? I have always been trying to guide at 26 to 28, and it has always it's great. But uh, not because molecules, typically we, th- we believe that we're robust at 26 to 28 percent of the margin. There is a, pot- a possible margin, but typically 28 is where we would be. And also, mind, mind you, that these are which are of high value products that we are talking about. My ASP is increasing significantly in this case, if you really see that. So, so the room for margins will also be higher. So there is a there is a there is a two way two way play that plays out here. And I I would not want to to say otherwise, but I would guide with 26 to 28 and leave it there for now. Understood. That's helpful. Uh, so, uh, and two small clarifications. So, uh, I'm not sure if you've already given this, but is there a breakup of uh, let's say uh, uh, capex for uh, FI24 in terms of uh, fluorination products and the non non fluorination, and similar for FI25, if possible, if it's there. So, so, so let let us have a have a have a have a block them because this is all projects that are happening and and they are all in the brownfield expansions, right? So what we are saying is large part of mine will happen but will will happen by this. But on the fluorination side, uh, basically uh, the LOI is 250 and the balance is fluorination 670 out of that. So 420 odd crores will be coming from fluorination and 250 will be LOI. Okay. That's great. I mean, so 670 is is what we are envisaging for 24, 25 inclusive, or there could be more in 25. Uh, right now, right now, this is the this is the capex that we have guided okay. for and announced. Uh, so okay. we would leave it there. Uh, okay. If there are any more, we'll come and update you on that as well. Sure, sir. Just small little clarification. Since you mentioned about you will be doing one step uh, at Tenfec. So, do you have the capabilities there? I mean, have you yes. uh, changed anything, or will you be just diluting uh, HF? So, it will be it will be a combination of in few cases it may be dilution will be good enough, or in in few cases there will be one more uh, uh, step that we we may do. But these are all the the capacities are there, and there are small bit of a, a, a amendments that have to be done, which we do that. Understood. Right? And, and Anupam will Anupam will support Anupam will support in in helping them helping them uh, do uh, the steps that are required. So uh, it should be a combination of both that would be good. Thank you so much, Vishal Bai, for patiently answering my question, and wish you all the no best. No problem. No problem. Welcome, and uh, thank you for thank you for the wishes. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Rohit Nagraj from Centrum Broking. Please go ahead. Rohit, your line has been unmuted. Please proceed with your questions. As there is no response, we'll move to the next question from the line of S Ramesh from Nirmal Bank Equities. Please go ahead. Good evening, and uh, thank you very much. Um, so, if you uh, look at the capex numbers you just shared, is 420 for fluorination and 250 for LOIs. So, together, this represents whatever is the additional capacity required. For uh, the uh, new LOI which you have signed in uh, March and April, am I correct? So, so what we have said, uh, if you see the announcement of the capex was done during the uh, August September time period, September or time period, which is when yeah. we had a 2600 crores of 26 for 26500, 2650 crores of uh, LOIs. Or uh, 2600 crores of LOIs that we had signed, and that was to service 250 crores was to service those LOIs, plus a 420 crores of uh, uh, revenue for uh, sorry the capex for fluorination. If you look at uh, so that's the total revenue total capex that we are looking at from now. Uh, if you look at this, this this should uh, practically at 1.75 times uh, a, a run as well, uh, a set turn as well. We should. To uh, you know, uh, give it, give us a revenue of 111 to 1200 crores of revenue, and uh, that's where it is. And in the fluorination, there are few LOIs which we have signed from here. Also, will be serviced from the the fluorination uh, blocks that we are we are we are establishing. Okay, so uh, to put it in perspective, for the new LOI 1500, 980, and 380, you don't need any further capex, right? 
largely we should not need that for now we don't okay. see that that this coordination block should be able to suffer service that okay so so if you look uh, put the all these numbers together and look at say 27 26 27 you have existing revenue on a stand alone basis 1280 crores plus this 1100 crores so you are saying that you will reach about 2500 crores uh, without assuming any growth in the existing revenue right so what is the growth so in terms of the estimates if you look at 26 27 assuming the revenue of close to say 1000 crores from the new lois uh, how, what is the kind of growth one should expect in the current um, you know base revenue which you have reported in fi 23 Uh, so, uh, Mr. Ramesh, what I will try and do is I will not. Uh, uh, it would be not a, a ideal thing for me to give you a specific number for a specific time. But what I can suggest and and say is that the kind of revenue growth that we have seen historically, uh, we should be able to see that on a standalone basis. Uh, and that's what we would say for next three to five years. We should be able to see that. What one more? And uh, that's what I would I would I would leave it at. No, so the question yeah, yeah. here is some some part of that is uh, you know uh, coming from existing contracts and these contracts sure. will have a certain life right so uh, can we attribute any yoi growth in those contract revenue and then what is the chance that they'll get renewed that is uh, the angle from which i'm asking that question so okay, fine that i can answer and say that if you look at my contract so, so if you see typically when you see any of these contracts it is not that these contracts are, are are having a sunset clause in that sense that they would stop buying from us because with, if you look at historically what has happened the demand that we had for a product let's say in 2006 it continues for even till today so if you look at it from that perspective what, what demand comes to you typically stays with you unless we make a big error or a mistake and and we don't deliver on promises that we have we have given on a gross level basis right and so when the contract let's say five year contract ends it is not as if that they they, they move to another another party because see what happens in 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 this our business as you are aware of the customer synthesis business there is a lot of optimization that happens over a bit of time lot of te- knowledge transfer happens knowledge gain that we have one is initially there is a knowledge transfer or knowledge discussion and agreement and then as we work over a period of time those Those, those knowledge that knowledge is only expanded and 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 and, and, and so the process are optimized so the moment you do that process optimization that is where our customers will keep staying with us and also also you have to appreciate that there is always a, a, a you know a supply chain that 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 gets created around that so for me when i'm doing let's say step uh, you know five step process or a 10 step process then yet each step there are a lot of uh, raw materials and inputs which come in and and, and that is it so the kind of process optimization capacity and supply chain that we create and and the value 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 uh, in and uh, and and engineering and enhancement that we do typically you don't see customers moving out and also for customer also there is no reason for them to move out and go to somebody else because there's so much of an effort to change any 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 vendor from one to another unless you make a big mistake you tend to not you you will not lose that in our history we have not lost a client uh, on 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 that count so does this apply to even the molecules which are near of i would request you to please come back in the queue sir i would request all the participants to please limit their questions to two per participant should you have any further questions you may join the queue back the next question is from the line of rohit nagraj from centrum broking please go ahead Yeah. Uh, okay. Sorry uh, to interrupt here. Your voice is breaking up. No, you you're not in the network coverage area. I would request you to please come back in the queue. Yes. The next question is from the line of Madhav from Fertility. Please go ahead. Hi, good evening. Thank you so much for your time once again. Uh, I just thought if you could just share a bit more of an updated view on uh, the kind of opportunities that uh, companies like Adipom and other players in the uh, sort of trams um, or CDMO space in India are seeing, just uh, in terms of Europe plus one, China plus one. I know this is something which is discussed quite often, but just your updated thoughts on what's happening there. Are we still seeing strong traction of business moving out, and how companies like us can sort of scale up in the next five, seven years? So, 
so fair one madhav and 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 rightly you use the word updated as well because yes, there is there is there is a uh, uh, you know kind of a few that that gets updated uh, time time to time as you as you rightly said there is an europe plus one china plus one approach yes the pri- there was a time when the when the energy prices and and the other costs had gone up significantly for for the european manufacturers and china was off the grid uh however the prices are now coming back to 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 more reasonable levels or more uh, rational levels in europe as well but they are not as low as what they were pre pre that event so the new normal is not the old normal but yes it is not uh, so so high as well but what has happened with this uh, experience and everybody has a memory and, and especially the supply chain managers have have a, have a, have a have a very high aversion to any disruption or 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 a spike on either side in terms of the the supply disruptions or the price disruptions and that is the reason that you will see that there is a consistent flow of uh, of of uh, of inquiries to to the to to to, to the players like us and and in india and that is for two reasons one is they want to diversify their 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 supply uh, sources irrespective of what they would do in 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 europe so i am not saying that everything from europe will move to to the to the asia but now allocation is increasing and 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 they are introducing uh, asian players early in the in the life cycle then then only in the later part of the life cycle so both is happening together and 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 we see that uh, trend continuing because of of the structural reasons that that i was mentioning that once they have seen that uh, shock wave they really believe that they have to find an alternate and they have to do a you know as they there are various words for that like bcp and other but they would do that so 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 in summary what we are saying is indian indian players like ours and rpos should see a good quality good quality of inquiries and uh, that's what we are also seeing here and that's that's also the reflect our lois and the current conversations are a reflection of that as well got it and i just wanted to understand uh, like some of our contract wins which you all have announced uh, uh, in, like especially the ones still announced more recently there were some uh, engineering fluids fluoropolymers electronic chemicals etc which are coming in so how do you see the mix of revenues uh between agro pharma electronic chemicals uh, you know and other sort of end markets after next 3 years like how does how should the mix look i'm assuming like the mix of agro will kind of come down is that the right understanding you you are right see the agro mix would like would, would come down a bit for sure uh and uh, the contribution from pharma and uh, the polymers would would go up but mind you that my agro business is also growing so there will be a, a a fair bit of uh, uh you know uh, uh churn not churn i would say but uh, the that 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 addition will be gradual though the growth of these two category uh, you know segments will be high but the uh, the, the share in my revenue will take a little bit uh, a gradual gradual flow for that and that's all i would say but yeah they would be they would they would go go add uh, they will be higher higher in my revenue as we go further Got it. Okay. Thank you. thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dhruv Mochala from HDFC Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, sir. Thank you so much, and uh, congrats for the recent wins. So, first question is on the capex, the six seventy crores that you mentioned over FY twenty four twenty five. Does it also include the ten five capex? No, the ten five will do their independent capex from their own balance sheet. This is this is the capex that we are doing for our own uh, capacity and requirements. Sure. And the second is a bit conceptual. So you have announced LOIs and contracts. So what is the uh, conceptually what is the difference between an LOI and a contract? So LOI is the is the initial level at which we we, we initiate the relationship, and that's where uh, it's there. And then we tend to convert into contracts. Or there are few customers who may start the purchase uh, right from the LOI stage itself, and and it will depend upon the relationship that we have and the comfort that we have with each other. uh either we we end up con- con- converting into a contract or we we do the business continuing from an LOI phase as well so for all practical purposes uh, for us the LOI and a contract is in i i don't want to 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 to, to stamp it that way, but you are right that once you have an LOI there is a very very high level of visibility in terms of revenue it will be only 
um, uh, really uh, if we make uh, a big error otherwise yes as you saying and that is the same when we are even the supplier also so yeah so sure, because uh, earlier the uh, earlier the understanding was the loi gets converted into a contract and then probably you start recognizing revenue so but that is not the case and well loi also can directly start reflecting in revenues and broadly an loi will be effectively a revenue generating yeah see what is an loi is also basically uh, you know spelling out the contractual related contractual expectations of each other right and that you make it into a contract and sign it or you continue doing it it's 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 matter of to 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 a buyer and a seller really just being comfortable with what 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 is uh, the 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 level at which they want the comfort and the clarity but yeah got it got it that's helpful and the, the last question is uh, now uh, at the time of ipo our, our inventory days were about 200 odd and since then uh, to the with the addition of these loi and contracts our revenue will scale up significantly uh, but I, i'm just a bit curious about your uh, inventory days guidance it's still about 200 or sub around that uh, but given that most of these contracts are new and probably you would have signed at better terms uh, just doing a rough math all In all new contracts coming at better inventory days terms would probably take your inventory days once the full revenue run rate is achieved uh, below 150 or below even probably 130s levels so just wanted to get uh, is that directionally correct or is there something which i probably missing so see, see so uh, if you look at it the, the, the loi will start contributing significantly in 2025 2026 and so 24 is what i am i was i was mentioning that right and hence i'm i'm i'm, I'm saying this number and as we go yeah that numbers will improve will it go to the numbers that you are speaking let me let us let us let us discuss in in in, in two quarters from here on but uh, for fy24 that's the number that we are trying to suggest yeah because i understand uh, in your earlier conversations also you were mentioning even your existing business i mean in the, uh, the fy22 level businesses you were renegotiating those contracts as well so the inventory days should improve there itself plus the incremental contracts that you have one would come at better inventory days i believe and hence oh, the overall numbers will look meaningfully different the inventory days or the overall working capital will look meaningfully different versus what it is in fy23 24 once you achieve the full run rate fy26 probably 27 Yeah, yeah, it should. I will just, 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 just uh, share a word of caution that when we are also a primary or a single supplier to to our customers, they will also expect the part of the 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 finished goods to be also held as as a as a as a you know buffer inventory for them also in terms of their supply. So to that extent, you have to give an allowance for that. But you are right that directionally you are directionally you are right in terms of, in terms of the extent it will it will it will evolve as we go. Okay, sure, sir. Thank you so much, Anupam. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Chetan Thakur from ASK Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Good evening, sir. Hi, good evening. Yeah. So, just wanted to check out of the LOIs and contracts which are signed between Q1 FY22 till Q4 FY22, which is an annual peak run rate of 530 crore. Uh, are those contracts already at peak, or is there scope for uh, them to hit peak uh, in 24? and it will it will it will take uh, so as we had mentioned earlier of that uh, we have we have commercialized four of the four of the molecules and around 100 crores of revenues coming from there and that will expand in fy24 and also in fy25 because there are few which will ramp up in fy25 uh, period as well so your fy24 revenue breakdown will be uh, some of these molecules hitting peak in uh, 24 contribution starting from the three lois uh, that you just won so out of that two will start to contribute and mm-hmm. whatever is the organic growth in the base portfolio that should be a fair understanding you are right you are right and sir any indication from customers particularly on the agro side uh, in terms of the slowdown that they've been guiding so few of them have come out and said that there is inventory in the channel so is there any uh, word that you heard from them around the thing i Okay, let me give a give a first shot at it, and probably Ananda can also add on to this. Uh, but uh, at least, at least uh, in terms of the, the revenue projections or comfort, we are not seeing that happening. Uh, in fact, in uh, in few cases, it has also increased in terms of their expectation from the from the revenue uh, from the volume that they have want to offtake. But Ananda, please, please, if you would want to add on to this. No, I think we have covered well, Shobhan. Sure. So nothing as of now from their end to you. No, 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 no. Sure, sir. Thank you so much. All the best. 
Thank you. Thank you. Due to time constraint, this was the last question for today. I now hand the conference over to management for closing remarks. Oh, okay. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining this call. We hope we have been able to answer all or most of your questions. If you have any further questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to our IR agency, EY, and we will get back to you. If you need, uh, we are happy to answer any, any more questions through EY or otherwise. Uh, thank you for joining us and being part of our journey. Uh, hope that we, 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 we make this journey of ours meaningful with each other. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Anupam Resign India Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.